breather is Isaac Barker. Hi, I'm Isaac, a recent graduate of the IB program and still trying to search for my writing voice. I've tried my hand at poetry, short stories, longer fiction, essays, and won't stop. I am influenced by philosophy philosophical activity of all kinds in the moral, existential, and epistemological spheres. I love sorry, that um, yeah, Coco comment. Um, I, can, I can blame it on that, right? I love inviting people to think deeply about certain prompts within these spheres or have the ability to simply relax and enjoy it. You can find him on Instagram, under, at underscore Isaac underscore Barker underscore. Where do you want to escape to, Isaac? A little cabin in the woods with a toadstool, personal library, and cats. Oh, just great. Please help me in welcoming Isaac. Okay, yes. Can everyone hear me okay? Yep. It scares me. <laughs> it was very intimidating. Um, so, just a quick thing. I had no idea and forgot to title it um, because it was just written down as LMD2. Um, the 2 was just because it was the second file in the fourth folder um, of the same iteration. And LMD was because I was doing a little challenge, which I also recommend, of every week get a random word generator to give you three random words and see whatever you can do with those three words over the week. Um, and so LMD was for Luminous Mirage Desert were my three random words. And so this was the product of that little play thing. So here. Light streamed through pinprick holes in the night's tar fabric. The moon stared indifferently at me, whilst her star companions embraced lewdly at the fore of a purple hue. The air swirled between the dunes, floating to the vertex to ride between the drops. There was no moisture in the air, no smell. The moon was gentle, and she wasn't jealous. She didn't bar the star's light, simply shone her own proudly. The stars, how do they know each other? How did they come to talk so eloquently with the world? Will they still be here tomorrow, or am I the lucky last? I heard the sky's conversations just, sorry, I heard the sky's conversation, just I saw the canvas of the night, painted in all her beauty and all her shame. I didn't only travel for sightseeing, I wanted to travel between realms. For a circumnavigatory venture, it was only fitting for the last place to be some desert with a bare sky and bare dunes. It wasn't long before the moon's compliments became backhanded. The spiteful cold seeped into me. Denim and cotton offered no protection. The wind toyed with the sand. Their small talk turned to insults which clawed at me before dissipating. The moon, she was perplexing. She invited my sleep, so why did she look so sad? Shouldn't she be happy? We were meant to be inseparable. This locale was our wedding, this sand, the heirloom to wed us, and this act one of devotion. So why wasn't she happy? Maybe it's the wrong angle. I continued walking. The sand in my shoes, a discomfort which was itself comforting. At some point, I found myself kicking the dunes, not quite in anger, nor distress, nor sadness. The stars and the moon speak no words, so why, are they so why are they betraying me now, of all times? The horizon began to murmur. A small light appeared on that line, separating the material plane from the sky's fabric, but it wasn't the rising sun. My steps changed. I didn't kick the ground, rather strode with purpose. Closer and closer, the light grew, until finally it came into view. It was water or a mirage. I looked back at my rejected partner. The moon was stoic. Is this a joke? It was the only thing of life that could maybe be taken seriously, and it was going to end with a horrendous joke. 
a mirage, a fool of the body, a jester of the mind. I walked closer, the mirage undying. Lights flickered off the water, bouncing to the beat of my steps. I knelt in front of the water, the image unceasing. A touch proved its nature, it was real. The pond reflected the night sky perfectly, no, imperfectly. In it, the lights were strewn together. I submerged my fingers, my palm, my wrist, my elbow. It kept going. When finally, I opened my eyes beneath the surface of the water. They feasted on mountains of marble, glass, and light that ran contagiously through the calm waters. I saw stalls with silk tarps and fireflies and jars set upon their counters. Fish swam or flew over the people who marched by, briefcases in hand. They wore those sharp shoes and button-up vests under their coats like business people. This whole place was a business of its own. Here, it was like Earth had ticked off its axis. The monochrome of the world cried joyful tears of color. A tick that shifted everything in the wrong direction the right way. The ripples of the water raised up to invite me in. I'm not losing time and there's nowhere better to be. I accepted the water as it took me. I fell further and found myself standing in a walkway. The water neither filling my lungs nor stealing my breath. Warm, welcoming light and a poorly laminated open sign beckoned me closer. It was a cafe with large windows turning the corner of the block. I walked in and was met with the jingle of a bell. The tables inside sat up to four but were mostly assumed by lovers. I was blanketed in warmth, dispelling the cold's ill. The counter had a charm of its own. It had sweets of all kinds behind the glass, cakes, chocolates, macarons, and a small assortment of other desserts. Behind it, the barista stood with a lone coffee machine. She looked sweet, small but not slender, and the round glasses she wore magnified her sparkling blue eyes. Next to the register, there was a sign reading All Time Special in all capital letters. An image of an indescribably peculiar bottle. Without missing a beat, the barista put her hand on the, gen on the little sign and said, This one costs your life as well. She still wore that sweet smile while saying it, and her voice was soothing. Weirdly, the eeriness didn't settle in. I felt calm and relaxed. My shoulders were lowered, and my toes rested comfortably in my shoes. The bridge of my nose felt warm. I'd like it. Of course, the barista chippered. She grabbed a bottle from under her. As the bottle moved in motion of her hand, the substance inside of it looked slowed, a water that didn't quite flow. There was a small whirlpool inside of it that spun itself a soft, luminous glow. The barista poured the drink into a coffee mug. This beverage lived in two, moving simultaneously, rapidly and glacially. It made the room more vibrant, the world more vibrant, and blurred everything around it so that the liquid was the only thing to exist. Or was it the relationship to the liquid was the only thing to exist? The liquid lived, it lived in a duality, so happy as to want to live, yet so content in its permanent rest. The barista slid the cup over the counter towards me. I drank from the cup, not moving away from the barista, not being seated. I didn't break eye contact with her. She simply drank that which lived all in all paths. Thank you. That was so incredible. It's so amazing and always the case that we are submitted these works and it's a blind process that we're judging them by. So we're just sent these documents and we read them, but it's so hard to know how they'll be read on the night. So you just have to read them for the quality of the work that's there sort of thing. And then they come up and they read their work and you can really appreciate it finally. Like you're like, ah. Oh, that's how it's meant to be read like that's how it's meant to be and it's just it's just incredible like you hear like work like that and you're really transported to those places and it's just it's so amazing